For our next example, we're going to be begin our study of while loops. Depending on how you learned these and what you do, you may solve them slightly differently than me. I will show you the method that I use, but it's not necessarily the only method that you're allowed to use. My method for solving while loop problems is to create a trace table to understand what happens to the value of my loop variable. So let's start by looking inside of the while loop. That takes constant time, just a bit some basic arithmetic. And we're going to create a table to try and understand what happens to the value of i, the value that's updated inside of the while loop, as we advance through the loop. So I'm going to keep track of the iteration and the value of the variable in some table over here. At the start, before I've done any iterations, i is equal to 7. And then I'm going to continually add 3 to that. So after one iteration, I have 10. After two iterations, I have 13. After three, I have 16. After k iterations, I have 7 plus 3k. Let's verify that that checks out for the first couple values. If I plug in 0, I get 7. If I plug in 1, I get 7 plus 3 is 10. If I plug in 2, I get 7 plus 6, that's 13. Plug in 3, 7 plus 9, that's 16. Math seems to check out for the things I wrote down. I encourage you, when solving a problem with while loops, to make several lines in your table so that you can verify that your pattern is correct. What, what do we use this information for? We're trying to determine when does this terminate how many iterations does it take? That is our goal. So our, we can figure out when does the value of i, if we're being precise, we want to know when does that exceed our stopping condition, because our stopping condition is less than or equal to n. We want to know when do we finally pass the threshold to being greater than n. For practical purposes, we'll only ever be off by 1 if we set it equal. So we're going to set this equal to n. It stops when. That equation is true. So let's solve for the value that represents the number of iterations, which is k. So I'm going to subtract by 7 and divide by 3 and get k equals n minus 7 over 3. Just to make this a little more clear, let's recolor that so we can easily identify that it is some of its own work off to the side there. Now, let's try and use that information. What does this do? It does some basic assignments that takes constant time, that's not a big deal, and then runs this while loop about n minus seven over three times. And what is the cost of each run? Well, let's see. So my runtime would just be t of n is equal to c plus c plus c, a whole bunch of constants, because that's what's inside of the while loop. How many constants do I get? Well, I get n minus 7 over 3 copies of that constant c. So t of n is just equal to n minus 7 over 3 all times c, which means that t of n is in theta of n. This is as simple as while loops get. We will see several examples that are much, much more time consuming.